Well, now that we know how to make all these heaps, what can we do with them? As we look down into YPO Valley, we will look at applications to heap sort and priority queues. Here's the idea behind using heaps to sort. Suppose an array A, 1 to N, contains the keys to be sorted. If we call build max heap on the array, then this whole thing here will become a heap, and we know that the maximum element is always at A sub 1, the beginning of the heap. So we can swap that A sub 1 element with the last element at A sub n, which will destroy the heap property, except that we will now define the heap to be one smaller. We're going to cut it off here, and then we're going to call max heapify on this new heap to let the thing we just put here trickle down. And then we'll repeat. At that point, the maximum of the remaining portion of the array will be here, and we can swap that, putting it over here, and putting a new element here, cut the array down one size smaller, reheapify, and keep going. So here's the code for doing that. You give heap sort an array A, you build a max heap out of it, and then for i is length down to 2, you exchange the first element with the last element of the heap. You cut the heap size down by 1, and you reheapify. So when you're done, you've been cutting the heap size down as you go, and eventually you've got everything, you know, the, the maximum, the next maximum, the next smaller, the next smaller, and the very last one left here will be the smallest, and things will be sorted in increasing order. The runtime analysis of heap sort is fairly straightforward. We already know from our previous analysis that build max heap is big O of n. And we can see that this loop here executes n minus 1 times. And we have a uh, big O of 1 exchange and decrementing. And then we have max heapify, which is log n. So we have uh, n times calling something big O of log n. So the result is that this is big O of n log n, which is typical for an efficient sorting algorithm involving comparing keys. So let's look at an example here. I'm going to make an array of five integers, and I'm going to draw it after it's already been uh, build max heap has already run because you already know how that works and we don't need to go through those details now. So let's say we have an array A and it's been reheapified with build max heap and it has numbers 7, 4, 3, 1, 2. Okay, so suppose that's the heap after build max heap. Well, what tree does that look like? You should be able to draw this when asked. Okay, seven's the root, left child's four, right child's three, and then two times two gives you the left child four, which is one, right child, and three doesn't have any children. So that's what we start with, and then the loop of heap sort successfully takes out the maximum from the first position here and swaps it with the last element in the heap, which is currently here and then calls max heapify. So pay attention. We're going to swap the first and the last. Perhaps I should also record at the moment i equals 5. But then we decrement the heap size and we call max heapify. So now we're working with um, a heap that starts here. So when we call max heapify it's going to compare 2 to its children, 4 and 3. We've been through this before, so I'll do this really quickly. 4 is the larger, swap, and then compare 2 to its children, which are positions... Oh, this is not in the array anymore, or not in the heap. We've, we've cut that off, so it's okay. So after that step, I'm going to redraw what this looks like here now. We have 4, 1, but the 7 has been set off on the side here. The 7 is now set aside as not in the heap anymore. Okay, then we repeat this. Now, 4 is the last element in the array, where, of course, i is now 4. And we're going to, uh, position 4 is the last element, we're going to change it with position 1. 
So it's going to look like this. And we now mark the end of the ray being here, or the end of the heap being here. And we call the uh, max heapify, compare it to its two children, three is bigger. And so this has resulted in the situation where four has been added to the end of the list of results we're constructing. Maybe I will move that over here to get it kind of out of the way. And so the tree at this point looks like three, two, one, and these things are off on the side there. So again, we swap and reheapify. So we have this situation. Three is in our results list. And obviously the two is going to be put down there next and then finally the one, and then we get our sorted list. So that, in a nutshell, is how heap sort works. It has an advantage over merge sort that it sorts an array in place. It doesn't have to make a copy. And it's a pretty good sort. Um, it turns out that something we're going to study on, on the next screencast set, uh, quick sort, is better in practice. But this isn't a bad one to know about. Well, we've wandered through a rainforest and found ourselves at the top of Pololu Valley. We're getting our priorities straight. An important application of heaps is priority queues. And we've seen we have min heaps and max heaps, so we have uh, min queues and max priority queues. So a max priority queue will have the following operations. So insert inserts an item into the priority queue represented by S here. It's a set of elements. Maximum, of course, returns the element with the largest key. That's kind of like top on a stack. It doesn't actually take it out. Whereas extract max is more like pop because it actually takes it out as well as returning it. Uh, we'll just say ditto here for element with largest key. And finally, we can sometimes want to change the priority of something that's already in the queue. So we're going to have something called increase key. And this will increase the value of x's key to the new value k. And k has to be greater than the current, well, greater than or equal to the current key of x. So a uh, min priority queue has corresponding operations. Uh, well, it has insert, minimum, extract min, and decrease key. Uh, applications, max priority queues can be used in job scheduling. Like the, the highest priority job is always run next. But if a job ages, you know, it's been in the queue for too long, it's some priority might be increased, increased or for other reasons. Whereas a min priority queue, we're going to see them a lot in graph algorithms later in the semester when we're trying to find the shortest distance from one place to another. So we keep track of the shortest distance so far in a min priority queue. And they can also be used in event-driven simulations, where an event generates future events, and we need to simulate the events in chronological order. So the minimum being the next event is run next. Okay, first we'll look at accessing maximums. Uh, just looking at the maximum is trivial, of course, just look at the first element in the array. Extracting the maximum, we are going to record the first element in the array, but then we're going to have to do some work to restore the heap property after we take it out. So this looks very similar to the heap sort. We replace the first element in the array with the very last element in the heap. So why would you do that? Well, the very last element in the heap is guaranteed to be a leaf, and then you know that you can put it in the first place here and use max heap if I propagate it down, and so that will work correctly. So just like in the heap sort, swap them, decrement the heap size, and max heapify, and then return the max. The heap sort, of course, would run a loop here and keep essentially keep running, turning the max as it built up that list that we saw over that I was building up over here. So straightforward. We do have an error check for heap underflow if you're trying to that's like stack underflow. You're trying to extract something that's not in there. And these are all constants constant work. We have just this one uh, max heapify here, which again we know is big O of log n. And so that's the only thing that grows with n. So that's the complexity of extract max. And of course, this is big O of 1. 
We're going to look at increasing keys next because that's going to be used in the third procedure, which will be the insert. So let's suppose we want to increase the key of, of, of a node like 2. Let's suppose we increased it to 8. Now we violated the heap property. So we're going to have to look at its parent, see if it got bigger than its parent. And if it did, we're going to have to swap them. Notice that this is in the opposite direction of what we were doing before. We were percolating small things down. Here we're percolating big things up. Again, look at your parent. Are you bigger? Yep. And you stop when either your parent is no longer smaller than you or, when, of course, when you reach the root of the tree. So we can see that in the code here. First of all, um, if the new key is smaller, then that's an error because this is only supposed to increase key. And since it only moves things up, making the key smaller would risk, you know, for example, if we turn the 7 into a 2, and our code only propagates up, it wouldn't notice that the two got smaller than its children. So we get the key, and then we look at the parent, and while the parent is uh, smaller, we, we exchange, and then we set i to be the parent. In other words, we just move up the tree. So that's very straightforward. Uh, also, clearly, um, O of log n, no big surprise, because we always follow a simple path up the tree which is of height log n. In the web notes, there's a longer example you may want to look at. OK, so we've looked at how to remove things from the queue and how to reprioritize them in the queue. How do we get things into it? Well, I've drawn the priority queue here, the max priority queue, in its array representation. Hopefully, we have allocated plenty of space. We start filling up the array from left to right. And so, of course, we're going to want to use this next slot right here. And suppose we want to insert 9. But rather than putting 9 in there directly, we're going to do it a little bit differently. We're going to first increase the heap size to be one more, indicating that that slot is now part of the heap. Uh, we are now going to set the key of this new element we put in the heap to negative infinity. That is the smallest possible element. So that's guaranteed to be smaller than anything else in the tree. And by the way, where in this tree did we just put this? You should be able to readily and quickly know where to draw that over here. Well, it's right here. So no matter what leaf node you put it under, it's going to be smaller. But then we call increase key, which we already saw in operation. And so we are now going to increase this key to 9. And we saw that it works by comparing to the parent if it's bigger than the parent swap. I'll run through that quickly. And then finally 9 gets compared to 8 and we find that it's smaller and we swap them. Okay, so that is how the max heap insert works. And big surprise, since we are never doing more than log n, the height of the tree operations, this is order of log n. So priority queues can be implemented with heaps with log n operations for most of the regular operations, inserting them one at a time. Each cost is log n, extracting them as log n. And this is a very common data structure. It's used quite a bit. It's a really good one to know. Well, I hope this review is leaving you feeling on top of applications of heaps.